If you've got digestive and health issues, the carnivore diet might be the perfect diet for you. In this video, I share with you why it works and how to do it the right way so it actually heals your gut. I'm Dr. Jake, I'm a naturopathic medical doctor and integrative physician. On this channel, I share with you how to heal your body down to the root causes without any harmful drugs or surgeries. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. You're watching the Dr. Jake podcast. So if you're someone that has been dealing with gut issues for a long time, you've tried several different diets, etc., carnivore diet might be the right diet for you. So what's great about it is some people have guts that are so inflamed that are reacting to so many different foods, they need to get a very simple diet. So the carnivore diet, all it is, is meat. And it's usually many people that follow the carnivore diet, at least if they're trying to heal the gut, they're usually only doing like one to three different types of meat, like beef or chicken or pork. And they're not adding any spices or anything like that. So no herbs or no pepper, all they're adding is salt. So they're really calming down the gut and the gut's not reacting to all these different chemicals that are in foods. And this is able to let the body just rest and digest. Now, this is a, has to be done for everyone that wants to heal their gut. These are people that are just so reactive. So many of the people, sometimes I do like a food sensitivity panel, like a leukocyte histamine response test. And I see their histamines off the charts. They're reacting to most foods. They have hardly any foods that they really can eat. Or if you're someone that like every tiny little food I eat gives me a gut issue or gives me a rash or gives me a headache, whatever. The carnivore diet can be a great option for you. But what really needs to be done when you're following the carnivore diet, so when you do it, you need to be actually finding out what is the causes. Because if you don't, you're just going to feel good with the carnivore diet forever. And personally, I don't think the carnivore diet is going to have enough of the nutrition. And when we, we really look at like longevity and people living for long periods of time, they're not eating tons of meat all the time. Now, we haven't done a lot of studies of just people following carnivore diet for the, their entire lives and seeing how long they live. So maybe I could be wrong in the future, but there's so many different antioxidants and other anti-cancer properties in foods and cardiovascular benefiting things in other foods like fruits and vegetables that we're missing out in the carnivore diet. But this is a great diet to really calm the gut down and reset it. That's the key right there. We need a reset. It doesn't mean that we stay in reset mode forever. So we need to find out if maybe a big cause of what's going on and why your gut's so inflamed is related to SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. This is when you have too many bad bacteria hanging out in your small intestine where it's not supposed to be. This is causing damage to the gut lining, causing a lot of mucus, causing poor absorption of food, causing that damage, causing your immune system to be overstimulated and then starts reacting to all kinds of different food, leads to gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, or married of other symptoms. Or maybe what's going on is you have a leaky gut syndrome. So you need to be working on that leaky gut and working on healing the leaky gut syndrome up. Now let's say that it might be related to another bug called candida. You need to take care of that candida overgrowth, eliminate that, and then you can start slowly introducing a lot of different foods. So I'm not going to be able to talk about all the potential causes that are related to the gut having issues, but we need to go after the causes and not just say, oh, the carnivore diet, I feel awesome. I don't have any digestive symptoms. I'm losing weight. I don't have my headaches anymore. We need to find out, okay, what is really causing your gut to be so damaged and why you're benefiting so much from this diet. Now, there are some other benefits from it besides just helping with the inflammatory response, if you're just eating meat, you're going to not have spikes in your blood sugar. So it's going to be great for your blood sugar well-being. And having decreased blood sugar is going to decrease your inflammatory state. So it can be really great in that regard, possibly begin for cardiovascular disease by decreasing blood sugar. But the problem is you're eating tons of saturated fat that's pro-inflammatory. So that can be an issue too. So that leads me to the next point is that we need to eat high quality meat. That means that we don't just eat regular meat that you get off the shelf that has been just corn fed, conventionally raised, given a lot of hormones, antibiotics, et cetera, because you're not gonna get the benefits if you do that. You're gonna get all the toxic gunk that's coming in. You're not gonna get the full benefit. So we wanna eat organic, grass fed, free range. And if you're eating pork, you wanna make sure it's like a pork 
that's actually free range, that they're not just sitting there eating corn all the time because you're going to get those inflammatory fatty acids coming in. So what are the benefits from actually eating a high quality meat? So the big benefits, we talked about the, the corn fed beef, et cetera, that's pro-inflammatory. It's going to make inflammatory saturated fatty acids. It's not going to have the omega-9s that are higher in the grass fed. But also we want to make sure that it doesn't have tons of antibiotics because a big issue going on with the gut is that we don't have a good amount of good probiotics in there, right? So we don't want to further damage that when we're eating a lot of antibiotics, that's just going to make things worse. Also, we want to make sure that it's actually not cleaned with chemicals like Clorox or other things that they add or formaldehyde to the meat to keep it fresh longer. So we need to make sure that's not put on there. We want to make sure it doesn't actually have growth hormone in there that's going to cause all kinds of damage throughout our body, like promoting cancer growth causing a lot of inflammation, leading to cardiovascular diseases and endocrine issues and hormonal issues, thyroid issues, estrogen, progesterone, all that gets out of whack when we have the, all this growth hormone in there. So we want to make sure it's as clean as possible. It's actually just coming from an animal that's raised appropriately and eating the appropriate food. What type of meat should we be eating and the quality of these type of meats? So let's first start with the type of chicken that we should be eating. So what I want is free range chicken. This is a chicken that's not just sitting in a cage or just in a little area they're able to roam, just a very small little cage environment where they're just being fed corn, for example. Many times that's all they feed them or some other seeds. I want them to be able to pick and be able to get bugs or worms or other seeds or eat leafy greens or flowers and all this type of stuff, they're getting much high nutri higher tr nutritional value. And the higher nutritional value the animal gets, the higher nutritional value we're able to get. And this goes along with pork. Pork, usually they're just fed all the trash of the day. And many times they're just given a ton of corn. Again, that's how it is for majority of livestock. They just give a lot of corn, it's cheap, it fattens them up, and they're able to sell it for a good amount of money. But, but that's not good for our health. So you want them to be able to be out there on the pasture and they're eating the grass, they're eating the flowers, they're eating roots, they're eating everything out there that will bring more nutritional value in them. And that's going to totally change the quality of the fatty acids and also the proteins that you're bringing in and the nutritional value that you're bringing in the meats. Same thing with the turkeys. You don't want them just eating the same food all the time. You want them out actually grazing and being able to eat all kinds of different foods. This is just going to make a healthier food. It might sound crazy is that what they eat actually matters, but it's huge. And they need to be able to go out and eat all numerous types of food, right? Like we are healthier when we eat all kinds of different foods. Right now we're talking about the carnivore diet as a gut reset, but we really, over time, when we get things healed up, we need to eat a variety of foods with kinds of nutrients, constituents, bioflavonoids, and a lot of things we don't even know about food right now that we gain from eating a broad range of foods. So does a happy animal actually have a more nutritious meat? Here's what can happen and why we talk about like kosher meats or whatever. We do know, at least flavor wise, you don't want the animal to be in fear when you kill them because it does change the flavor because that's going to increase cortisol, epinephrine, and that totally changes the flavor of the meat. So probably a happier animal is going to have a nutritious meat. Do we have we done a ton of a lot of research on that that I know of? I don't. But probably it is better because you're not getting all those stress hormones that are coming in the meat. So if they're stressed, that, that does come in the meat and we do eat that. So you're getting cortisol. Many of us already have too much cortisol. So it does make sense for your health, theoretically. Do we want to be taking supplements when we're on the carnivore diet for the gut reset? You got to be very careful for this because remember a lot of the seasonings or herbs or whatever can cause a reaction in these, a lot of people that are actually getting the benefits from the carnivore diet. Now, if they're doing the carnivore diet and they aren't having all kinds of allergic reactions, it's totally fine to be taking supplements. And I do that for my patients a lot, but for these really reactive patients, that they're getting the benefit from the carnivore diet because it's so limiting in the type of, uh, based on just eating a few foods, is you don't want to do supplements. You don't want to be doing like the good stuff like glutamine or when you're trying to kill off SIBO, you don't want to be taking any type of uh, allicin 
or berberine or oregano oil or any of that stuff because they're going to react to it. So usually when I, I go the route, let's say if someone has SIBO, I'm prescribing a rifaximin, which is a good antibiotic specifically formulated for that. If they have candida overgrowth, that might be an issue. I'm going to be taking nystatin, which might be uh, good for that. The leaky gut syndrome, it, can, it just takes longer. The leaky gut will heal when we're not prescribing certain things with the carnivore diet, with all the proteins and amino acids and the glutamine that we're getting from the meats. So usually I don't have to do something specifically for that. Now, this depends on the person. Some people do great with the probiotics. Others don't do well at all and it's too reactive. So it's playing it by ear and actually seeing the patient and trialing things. But getting a good quality probiotic can be really beneficial for a lot of patients too to replenish that dysbiosis that's going on in the gut. How long do you need to be on the carnivore diet to really get a good gut reset? You got to at least do it for two weeks. Many people need to do it for several months. Sometimes some people need to do it for a year to really just calm that immune system down. But bare minimum is two weeks. For things that aren't really out of control, two weeks is sufficient. If things are really out of control, we usually able to get things cleared up in a couple of months. Yeah, to get a hold of me, if you want to learn more about the gut reset diet and do it appropriately with the carnivore diet, visit my website, integrativemedica.com. Find my phone number there, call my receptionist, and you can set up an appointment with me or some of my other great doctors that we have. You also can set up an appointment directly on our website. If you want to learn more about the carnivore diet, click my videos to the right. I'm Dr. Jake, and I'll see you there.